This video is sponsored by BW100 Electronic Contact Cleaner. The PS5 uses liquid metal to transfer heat from the APU to the heatsink, and it works really, really well. Unfortunately, liquid metal is much more difficult to work with than thermal paste, so in this video, I'm gonna replace the liquid metal in one of these with thermal paste, and then I'm gonna test them and see how much different that makes in the cooling. I have one PS5 that I've taken apart for my teardown video, and I have one PS5 brand new out of the box, so I'm gonna use this PS5 to remove the liquid metal and put thermal paste in and then we'll test the thermals on each of these consoles when we're done. Now I have seen some comments on some of my other videos stating that people think you can take this whole piece off without removing these 41 screws on this metal plate, but that is in fact not true. Unfortunately, in order to remove this motherboard heat sink sandwich, you have to remove this plate to get to this connector right here. And then you also have to remove this screw and this screw. I'm gonna remove the connector first and then pull the sandwich out and then remove these two screws after that. Now that we are down to the motherboard heat sink sandwich, as you can see here, we need to remove this screw and this screw, then we can pull the motherboard off and deal with the liquid metal. Now after removing those two screws, I'm gonna pull this motherboard as much as I can straight up and not tip it too much until I have to flip it over because the liquid metal can run and if it runs into components on the motherboard, it will short those components out and potentially cause an issue where the PS4 won't work at all or could even burn components out. So I need to make sure that the liquid metal stays right where it's supposed to and then we can clean it up and put in the thermal paste. And here we go. Lifting very slowly. I can feel the tension ease up as I lift. Now it's separated, now I'm going to flip it. And you can see all of the liquid metal stayed right where it's supposed to. So here we have the liquid metal on the heatsink. The first thing I need to do is remove this liquid metal from the heatsink. Then I need to do the same thing on the APU, on the motherboard. And then after that, we can clean it all up, install the perfect amount of thermal paste, then put it back together. So the first tool I'm gonna to be using to remove this is a little plastic blade. And then I also have a syringe with a very fine tip. So what I'm gonna do next is try and get as much of it as I can into this pile of liquid metal right here. Then I'll suck it up with the syringe and then clean up the rest. And that's probably about as good as I'm gonna get it. So now I'm gonna try and suck as much of this up in one try as I can. And then get it all together in a pile again. Now, as you can see, as I'm working with this, liquid metal has very unique properties, totally different than thermal paste. So if you decide to do anything with your PS4 that includes removing the motherboard, you need to be aware of this and ready to handle it if you need to do any work on the motherboard. But one of the reasons that I'm making this video is to see if putting thermal paste in in place of the liquid metal is even feasible. I think that's about as much as I can get out using this syringe. You can see I got a good amount out right down there. So I'm gonna finish cleaning this up and then I'll do the same thing for the motherboard. To clean up the rest of the liquid metal, I'm gonna be using a cotton swab along with this BW100 electronic contact cleaner. I'm gonna spray a little bit on. Then I'll just go along and twist as I go. And that will start soaking up the excess liquid metal. 
And while I'm on the topic of cleaning, BW100 cleans great and it evaporates leaving nothing left behind. No oily residue and it doesn't damage any electronic components. It's also safe to use on almost any type of plastic, rubber, and metal. Another thing I love about it is you don't have to clean it off when you're done. Once you use it and then do your normal cleaning, it'll just evaporate very quickly. BW100 is ideal for use on electronic components, cars, rechargeable devices, consoles, motherboards, laptops, cell phones, drones, sound system, and most any other place that electronic cleaning is needed. Another great thing I like about BW100 is it's easily available on Amazon, and they also have other great products in their product line, such as freeze spray that I use when I'm diagnosing problems on motherboards. So go to the link in the description if you'd like to try BW100 for your electronic cleaning needs. Now let's get back to this PS5. One thing I do need to mention is it is usually better to use a swab that doesn't have little pieces that'll come off, something like this. So usually I use something like that, and if you don't do that, you need to make sure and get all the little pieces that come off of any sort of cotton swab you use. Now this is fully cleaned of the liquid metal. Now it's time to do the same on the motherboard. Okay, and that's about all I can recover into the syringe. There's not a lot in here, but I definitely did get enough that I probably could reuse it. I'm mostly just doing this to help remove it as it's one of the easiest ways to remove the liquid metal. Now I'm gonna go through with Q-tips and get it even more clean. And then we need to remove this little cover right here. This whole thing that's black and gray is kind of like a cover that goes over the APU. So I need to remove that after I get it all cleaned up and then make sure the APU itself is all nice and clean before we install the thermal paste. Now that I have the majority of it off, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this gray and black piece right here. Now there is this ceiling ring around this piece and that ceiling ring is gonna keep any of the liquid metal from getting to any other components on this APU. So if you remove this, then you need to make sure that that gets back in place and that there is a seal between the liquid metal and the rest of the APU. And now with that off, I wanna make sure that all the liquid metal stays up here and doesn't get under this black seal right here. And now with the APU all cleaned up, Let's take a look under this black tape right here, just to see what's under here. And here we go, we have all the little tiny components on top of the chip, and that's why it is so important to not get liquid metal down here. You probably wouldn't ruin it, but at a minimum, it would make it so your console most likely wouldn't even turn on. So I'm gonna put the black adhesive back, then I'll put thermal paste on the APU, put it all back together, and then we'll test it and see how it runs compared to the PS5 with the liquid metal still in it. And of course, one of the most important parts of this entire video is putting in the perfect amount of thermal paste. Ah, uh, perfect. Now we can put it back together and test it. Now that I've got this PS5 put back together, I'm actually gonna unhook the fan. Then I'm gonna unhook the fan of the brand new PS5. This PS5 has not been taken apart, as you can tell by the warranty sticker that is still fully intact. Now both fans are disconnected, so now I'm gonna start these both up and see how long it takes for each of them to overheat. The PS5 with thermal paste I've connected to the TV because this one will obviously overheat way faster than this one. In fact, I'm not even sure if this one will overheat, so I think it's time to put them to the test. I'm gonna start out just by leaving it in the dashboard and see if it overheats just in the dashboard. So we just passed five minutes. There's been no overheating messages on the screen and I see no problems so far. I'm gonna let this go 
for about 10 minutes, and if there's still no overheating, then we'll enter a game and then see how long it takes after that. We just crossed the 10 minute mark, so I'm gonna get a game started up in the dashboard and then we'll see how long it lasts. So here we go. Let's start up Spider-Man. Now this is starting Spider-Man from the very beginning of the game. Oh, here we go. PS5 is too hot. And we've got 13 minutes and 12 seconds. It also seems weird that it's letting us... Oh, there we go. So this PS5 just beeped and shut down. Now let's check the PS5 with the liquid metal. I'll hook this one up to the HDMI and we'll see how long we can play without a fan on this one. Now Spider-Man has been played for just a little bit on this PS5 previously, just so I could test it. So we have gotten a little bit further into the game. Oh, here we go. So this one is too hot as well. So that actually only, it's only at 1434. So even though it's giving me the message, it does take another second to turn off. Let's see how long it takes to turn off on its own. You can see there is like a little bit of glitching going on. So it is still not turning off. There's definitely some glitching going on. Let's see what it'll take to get this thing to turn off. Okay, it's giving me the PS5 too hot alert again. There we go. So the PS5 with liquid metal went till 16 minutes and 29 seconds before it turned itself off. It did give me the overheating error two times before it turned itself off and then eventually turned off, but it definitely lasted longer than this PS5 with the thermal paste. I wanna do one more test on these PS5s. I'm gonna plug the fans back in and then do some temperature and noise checks. 15 minutes on the timer. Now I'm gonna play some Spider-Man. And there we have 15 minutes of gameplay. So now we're gonna test the decibel level. And the highest decibels on the PS5 with the liquid metal is 27.8. Now with the decibels checked, let's check the temperature. And the highest temperature is 26.1 degrees Fahrenheit or 52 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna start up the PS5 with the thermal paste, do the exact same thing, play Spider-Man for 15 minutes, then we'll do all the same checks. And there we have 15 minutes on the PS5 with the thermal paste. And the highest decibel level was 36 decibels. Now I'm going to check the temperature. And the highest temperature I can find is 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. It seems that the air temperature on this PS5 with the thermal paste is lower than the air temperature coming out of the PS5 with liquid metal. That actually makes sense considering the liquid metal is a much better thermal conductor. So it's getting the heat from the main chip on the board, the APU, and it's getting up to the heat sink and pushed out through the air exhaust with the fan much more efficiently than the one with the thermal paste. And that's why you hear the fan will kick up and then go back down and up and down. And it'll just continually do that throughout the game. Versus on the PS5 with the liquid metal, the fan just stays a nice constant, very quiet. So while I definitely would never recommend putting thermal paste in a PS5 just for constant use, it definitely will work in a pinch if needed. Thank you again to BW100 for sponsoring this video. If you need to clean off your electronics, I recommend BW100. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good one.